here we are again. One of the strangest versions of Hyrule we have ever seen in the series. And today we are once again going to bust some myths in this game because there's a lot we can cover. For example, can Freezerts drown? Is there a way to fly forever using a crow? And can little foes survive underwater? Well, let's find out. In the previous video we experimented a bit with enemies you summon and how they react to water. Now as you can imagine most of them will drown if you throw them into water, unless they are water enemies like the bomb fish, just to name one. But then I thought to myself, which land enemies can survive underwater? Some must be able to withstand it, right? One that came to mind that could work is the little foes, because in real life some reptiles thrive in water. So I decided to drop all the different types of little foes that you can find in the game into water to see what would happen. Now when I threw in the normal level 1 and 2 little foes, they instantly drowned. So clearly that doesn't work. But then something surprising happened. The level 3 version was completely fine, which made no sense at all. So yeah, there's one type that is a cut above the rest, which is pretty insane. When Nintendo released Breath of the Wild, I expected that speedrunners and glitch hunters would break the game in less than a week, which certainly happened. And then in Tears of the Kingdom, we saw the exact same. So yeah, I'm not shocked that some game-breaking stuff has been found in Echoes of Wisdom already. And recently I saw a claim that kind of shocked me. Apparently if you combine a crow and piece of meat, you can use it as a cheap flying machine. All you do is summon a crow, use try to hold onto it, and then you summon a piece of meat which you pick up. As soon as all of that is in place, you can go flying. Just let the crow fly while holding onto it. Because if you do this, in a way it's the carrot on a stick idea. But does this truly work? Well I tried it and as you can see, this is 100% true. Now it isn't perfect, because at some point you will go too high and will zone out, and to be honest, the crow is rather slow. So this works, but it isn't as useful as I thought it would be. Now when I first went through the game, I noticed that you can use a lot of the monsters who spawn in two ways. Either they run around and do the work for you, or you pick them up and work together. For example, both these approaches are a great pick when using the Spear Moblin. But is there a way to get rid of enemies and defend yourself at the same time? Well, I wondered if the Gustmaster could achieve this goal. Does its wind deflect range attacks? Well, I found a bunch of Spear Moblins and confronted them to see what would happen. Now as you can see, the wind does block incoming spears, which is super handy. So yeah, you can use them as some sort of shield. And if you carry one of these, you can use them to block shots while pushing enemies off cliffs to kill them. So yeah, the Gustmaster is pretty underrated to be honest. After I saw the level 3 Lizzle foes walk at the bottom of a lake, I was determined to do some more experimenting with other enemies. And one that came to mind that could probably pull this off as well was the Ribby and Drippy Tunes. Crazy singing frogs that can summon a rainstorm. But can they swim? Now as we all know, frogs are amphibians, which means that they can swim in real life. So I dropped them into the water to see what would happen. And as I already expected, they thrived down there. But then they did something unexpected. Expected. They started singing. For some reason, they were still able to sing underwater, which seems impossible to me, but hey, what do I know? Currently, the only thing I'm certain of is that this claim is true. Now in a game like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, you will sometimes come across NPCs that are fighting monsters in the wild. And if you help them, they will reward you, which is pretty neat. But they aren't the only ones who get help sometimes. Even you, Link the Hero, receive help from guards if you run into town while monsters chase you. So this isn't a one-way street. But is this a thing in Echoes of Wisdom? Well, I decided to test this by luring a monster to these three Gerudo guards. Now they did go into some sort of battle stance. But aside from that, they did nothing at all. They just stood and watched as I got attacked by this scorpion looking thing. Even other Gerudo guards found close to the oasis will do nothing if I lure a monster close to them. So yeah, clearly these guards won't help you no matter what you do. 
Now, of course, from day one, people have been trying to break the game or create certain shortcuts. And some people in the comments suggested that I should try some of these new techniques. So today we will try to use trampolines to skip entire sections of the game. Because Dory Vic said that you can use the trampolines to get infinite height by timing and spawning them under you while in a vertical room. Now, when I read this, I had to try it. So I entered a cave and tried to get over here using this one trick. And at first, I wasn't too successful, but at some point I understood exactly what I had to do. However, I still failed, so I practiced a lot to get better at it. And as you can see, I was able to get over there by spawning trampolines below me and jumping on them immediately. So clearly this works, but I will say it is a bit tricky to master. Now this next one is quite simple and fast, because it is something that isn't really new to most Zelda players. Now every hardcore Zelda fan knows that Kuko shouldn't be messed with, because if you attack them, they will go berserk. But is this also an Echoes of Wisdom? Sure, Link is always screwed when he triggers their rage, but maybe they will be nicer to Zelda. Well, I turned into the sword fighter form and attacked them, and as expected, they got pissed. Just like we saw in the older games, they attacked, and only left me alone once I fled the area so they're a bit more chill than they were in Ocarina of Time. But as soon as I went back to that area, they attacked again until I entered a building. So keep this in mind when you piss them off. Now just like almost every other iteration of Kakariko Village, there's a giant windmill somewhere in the town. But after messing around with the Gustmaster, I wanted to try something involving this iconic structure. Will the blades of the windmill spin faster if I place a Gustmaster close to it? I mean, it creates a strong wind, so it should do something, right? Well, that's what you would think, but as you can see right here, nothing happens. By the looks of it, you can't really manipulate the windmill whatsoever, which is a bit disappointing because this could been used for hidden heart piece for example but hey at least the windmill was seen in some other side quests in the region which i won't spoil in this video now every myth busting series has this one thing that I keep testing again and again. For example, when I was making videos on Tears of the Kingdom, I was constantly fusing stuff on shields to see if it could improve shield surfing. And so far with these Echoes of Wisdom videos, I have experimented a lot with throwing items and enemies in water to see how they would react. In the previous video, for example, we threw a freezer in the water to see if it would sink and die. But this didn't happen. But then my editor Kotlol asked me, can these enemies even drown at all? Let's say you create a bunch of water echoes and place this enemy at the bottom of them, will the freezer just survive? Now this was a good question in my opinion, so I did exactly what he suggested. I stacked a bunch of water blocks to see if I could kill the enemy on purpose, but to my surprise this was very ineffective. The freezer was fine and even slowly floated to the top, so yeah by the looks of it you can't kill them using water no matter how hard you try. Now, when I uploaded the first myth-busting video covering this game, I immediately saw a comment that was quite malicious. Because after I tried to kill the peaceful critters seen in Hyrule like the parrots that are found in the Faron wetlands, someone suggested a new approach for reaching that goal. Draco wondered if he could use water blocks to drown them. And could this also work on NPCs? Well, even though that is pretty dark, I did want to try it. So I ran around the world a bit and tried to capture butterflies, birds and other creatures in water blocks. But to be honest, it was impossible. Each time they fled before I could get close enough, so this doesn't really work. So I tried this with NPCs because they don't flee at least. But here I noticed that I wasn't able to trap them in water blocks no matter what I did. So again, I failed. Clearly this claim is false because Nintendo made sure you can't do something so evil. In the previous video we tried to freeze water and turn lava into rock, but overall we weren't very successful, which I thought was super disappointing. But then someone in the comments gave me a tip that could lead to more satisfying results. Grand Captain Speedy Dash said that you can turn a water block into ice, and someone else said that enemies are perfect for this. So I created a water block echo and summoned some ice enemies to see if anything would happen. And yeah, their icy aura was able to freeze these blocks in a matter of seconds. Seconds. So this certainly works, and I bet the same goes for melting these blocks using fire enemies. This is something we even saw in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and Nintendo clearly added it to this title as well. 
Now after seeing the trick with the crow and piece of meat work, I wanted to improve it. Because like I said, it has certain flaws. So I started experimenting like a mad scientist. I mean, I have the outfit for it, so why not? Now one idea that I came up with is combining the Gustmaster and a crow. In many ways, it is similar to that other trick. But now you place the Gustmaster behind you, hold on to it with try, and then you spawn in a crow that you pick up. Now I was hoping that the Gustmaster would blow wind under the crow's wings so that I would go up. And from there I could glide down, with the Gustmaster pushing me back up every once in a while. But does this work? Well yes, as you can see this works incredibly well and actually solves a lot of issues that we saw with the other trick. You're much faster now and you don't go out of bounds as fast. So yeah, this is awesome. Now those were all the myths we had, but don't worry, be sure to leave your ideas below in the comment section and you might be featured in a future video. And as always, if you're a member, you're at the top of my list. And of course I have to give a shout out to the massive legend member, Julian Lanning. And bef remember, there are more videos like this on the channel, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos and leave a like because it really helps.